It is indeed a great pleasure and an honor to welcome you all to the second international conference of ICB. The theme of this conference is still working. Is it? Never mind. It's all right. I'll, I'll manage that. I've got secondary plans. Right. The theme of this conference is a culmination of our work in Pakistan over the last 15 years. Let me trace briefly the history of ICB. As you heard, that I, uh, when I returned uh, to Pakistan after 40 years, spending 40 years in the UK, teaching, training, and working as a clinical psychologist, uh, it was 19, 2005. And I've, during my stay in the UK, I witnessed many changes in the field of clinical psychology, both in terms of theoretical development, application, uh, and the practice of clinical psychology. It is today, that will be unrecognizable if I describe you what, it was, hap what was happening then. W clinical psychologists worked primarily with chronic ill patients and predominantly in the medical model. And their work was mainly testing, assessment. I think assessment may be a too big a word for that. Testing for diagnosis that we had to make for, to help the medical, medical profession. It was with the advent of psychosocial theories of human behavior and understanding of psychological problems that broadened our understanding, personal experiences, emotional and behavioral consequences, social and cultural factors gained a new relevance to the etiology and the treatment of psychological problems. In 2005, I set up the first postgraduate degree program, training program in clinical psychology, replacing the one-year diploma that has been going on since 1984. <laughs> I had become more aware of the fact that the theory and the practice of clinical psychology are influenced very much by the culture in which they exist. The interaction among the social, cultural, and ecological realities can have profound influence on the development, the experience, and the presentation of psychological problems. So we opted out for a research-based approach to test the validity and the relevance of the current theories and practices of clinical psychologists. We reassessed some of the therapeutic techniques and the treatment procedures retaining the ones that worked well in our culture. In assessment, by making research as an integral part of the clinical program, we developed a number of tests and batteries, a cognitive behavior, cognitive assessment battery, and then uh, for school children, that is, scores of tests, personality functioning scales, and we went for functional assessment of the individual rather than diagnostic assessment. We found that was far more relevant for us. We have scales for interpersonal difficulties, resilience, self-concept, parent-child relationships, and so on. There are too many that we can, uh, uh, I can, I can list them over here. We do almost about 20 such, develop 20 such scales through research almost every year. We have extended our services beyond the limits of institutions, psychiatric institutions. We have in, involved ourselves in the community, particularly school children, university students, marginalized communities, people with hearing difficulties and problem and, and with the visual difficulties. And this is something that perhaps was unheard of 
and also in many other parts of the world, we find that clinical psychologists do not get involved th themselves so much with physical uh, limitations or impairments. Just to illustrate our work, I will just give you a preview of the previous conferences that we have held. I started in UMT 2011. Our first conference was held in 2015. It's called Indigenizing Clinical Psychology Issues and Challenges, because that is what we were preoccupied with at the time. In 2017, an international conference on clinical psychology and the developing world. 2018, International Conference on Promoting Mental Health Through Schools, A Way Forward. This is another model that we have uh, we presented, that we can at least start with schools to develop a mental health model for the whole community. And now this one, 2019, International Conference on Preventive Strategies in Clinical Psychology, Preemption and Proaction. We believe that we have laid down the basis of clinical psychology, albeit in a small way. However, as a result of our increasing involvement in the community, we have also realized the role of prevention, which has remained somewhat ignored and bypassed in many places in the world. This cry is heard from time to time, even from Western countries, that we are not doing enough in the field of prevention. The history of prevention in psychology is actually about 100 years old. And Kaplan's pioneer work in 1964, and many gallant attempts that are taken by some people, the preventive approach has not quite got the right place in our teaching, training of clinical psychology. Perhaps some of my foreign colleagues can also comment on that. Our emphasis is still mainly on cure, by and large. Our work here in the community has taught us that perhaps another way, another addition to our work is prevention of clinical problems, psychological disorders, emotional difficulties in the community. Normally, what we do is we wait until we get ill, and then we look for, what the, look for the cure. The philosophy of prevention ensures two things. First of all, that we stop these problems from coming up in the first place. That we stop these and also create those ecological, social, and psychological conditions in which these problems can stay under control. Secondly, we also need help of the, in, uh, the individual to upgrade his existing functioning capacities. One is called preventive psychology, the other one is called it positive psychology. So it's a combination of these two psychologies. We find it makes a very good mixture of what we are trying to do uh, for our future. There are a number of theories and techniques and practices that are already available. Surprisingly, quite a large number of them, both for institutions, hospitals, outpatients, schools, universities, clinics, rehab centers, special communities. We can use these things, but unfortunately we don't. Our work, particularly in school, for example, has shown that intervention a preemptive and proactive approach dealing with, let's say, great deal of anxiety that is rife in our school children and demonstrate that how they can control it at a very early age has shown us very good results. This conference is the first of its kind in putting together some of our thoughts and current experiences and developing strategies including preventive programs, particularly in the field of behavioral management, social education, and mental health.
the one of the one of the uh, important contributions of this conference is going to be uh, we have organized a panel discussion panel discussion of experts in the area from as many different parts of the world and different part, forms of training programs and so on and so forth. And we would ask them to get together. And the title is How to Build a Cat, or Who Will Build a Cat. And actually, from time to time, we do hear these murmurs from most countries, in most literature from different parts of the world, that we should go for prevention, but who is going to start? Or who is going to make it popular? And this is something that perhaps we come up against again and again and again. We hope that with the help of our experts, parents, teachers that are here, that we will be able to find a way in which we can start working towards developing prevention as well as cure for the population.